know that you just sang 24 alleluias as an expression of your confidence in God's word. Grace and peace to you. The sermon is going to be based upon the gospel lesson from Luke chapter 12. Just one verse, permit me, to be able to share with you. Here, here's what Jesus said. Do you think I came to bring peace on earth? No. But I tell you, division. Well, what causes division? And I suppose if you weren't in church right now, you may walk out the door and say, uh, politics. Politics causes division. So maybe that's why you only mention it when you're um, in a room filled with like-minded people. Or maybe you just do it just to get somebody riled up. Uh, sports, your favorite sports, they can cause uh, division. You know, forget this whole, oh, we just, it, it's just for fun. No, you can't say that after this past Thursday night's game. H how about remote controls? Do they cause division? It depends upon who's holding it, right? <laughs> but if I, I, if I said, what about what seriously causes divisions? You, you already know what causes divisions within uh, the world, within your own family, in marriages. Some you've already experienced, and you know the common causes. It's selfishness that gets in the way. Um, it's, it's poor communication between people. It's... Um, um, it's, it's a lack of love that you, you can try to fake it, but people can still sniff out uncaringness in people. Lack of forgiveness. Yeah, that causes division. But I don't know if, if the question, what causes divisions, I don't know how many of you would have responded this morning, Jesus, Jesus causes division. Oh, that, that sounds strange. It almost sounds like, that's just not right. That can't be true. When Jesus came into the world, the angels sang glory to God in the highest and peace he brings to earth, right? He's the prince of peace. Jesus brings love and peace. He doesn't cause divisions. And yet, in Luke chapter 12, in, in the hearing of thousands of people, Jesus says, do, do, do you think that I've come to bring peace? Oh, no. But division. Why would he say that? I believe he says it in order to prepare you to face division. Because division and conflict, yeah, those are going, it's going to be unavoidable. You're going to have to face some fire. The question is, can you take the heat? Jesus said, uh, I've come to bring fire on earth. He literally was saying, I'm, I'm literally going to be throwing it out throwing out this fire on earth. In one of his Bible uh, letters, Peter warned persecuted Christians, don't be surprised at the painful trial that you are uh, suffering. And when he says painful trial, he literally is meaning a fiery test, going through fire. And, but he wasn't referring to uh, pain that is caused by uh, bumps, bruises, broken bones. Nor was he referring to the hurt that's called, caused by a heartache or from headaches. Those are all things that are common to you maybe uh, in your life. No, this kind of a pain believers endure simply from following Christ. So uh, who's warning us of, of this kind of a fiery pain this morning? Jesus. Who is the source of this fiery pain? Jesus says, I am. I have come in order to bring fire uh, on earth, which seems almost contradictory, right? Peace on earth, fire on earth, which is it? It's, I believe it's all one and the same. Think of it this way. When, when Jesus comes and, and shows his love to people, it's gonna do either one of two things. It is uh, people's hearts are gonna be warmed and they're going to believe in 
his personal and, and passionate love that he has for it, that's a good fire, fire of faith, right? But then rejection of him sometimes is kindled. And so the same reaction is uh, they just don't even want to have anything to do with them. There's good fire and there's bad fire. And even Jesus himself said, I have a baptism to undergo. But he wasn't looking back at his previous baptism by water. He's looking ahead to his baptism by fire, right? Because you've heard that phrase, uh, you're going to have, sometimes it's, it's a baptism by fire. Jesus is looking ahead and he sees what's going to be, what lies ahead of him. And the thought of it is just stressing him out. He knows what he's what, that's the whole reason why he even came into this world in order to face the heat. He knows he's going to have to walk through an incinerator for sin to feel the scalding of God's holy anger, the, uh, the abandonment on, uh, uh, of hell itself, the uh, humiliation of death on a cross. He, Jesus says, this is the payment that is to be expected. This is my blood that is to be shed. So today, Jesus is looking ahead at it all. And it's making him sick to his stomach. He says, how distressed I am. So what do I do? Do I, do I ask my father, Father, save me? No, it's for this very reason that I have come to this hour. Here's Jesus. Uh, I don't want to go through with it, he says. But I got to go through with it. You, you, you think of the pain and the heat that you have to sometimes take in life. Jesus understands what it feels to face division. He, he knows what it means to take the heat. I suppose the good news this morning is he took the heat. I mean, it is done. He, he faced the heat and he came through on the other side of it. And the, the, the results of it are not just could. I mean, they're absolutely transformational. You heard one of them in, in the first reading where the Lord declares, is not my word like fire, but this is a good fire. This is a fire that cleanses you from your sins so that uh, whoever believes in him, you're not going to perish from the fires of hell. Whoever believes in him, the, the, the flames have been doused in the powerful spray of your baptismal water so that when Jesus said, my peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, that's just not a hope. This is the real deal. There, this is real unity. This is real fellowship, real forgiveness that is now yours. Jesus has done it all, but it's interesting, the mixed reaction. That's where the clash is. And that's what Jesus is talking about. There's, when, when you can have Jesus there, and yet it's either going to ignite faith or it's going to ignite unbelief. It's going to stoke love or hatred. It's going to cause peace or, it's gonna, or there is going to be a division. And then, if you look at Luke chapter 12, Jesus says it can actually get very personal where it can split a family right down the middle husband from a wife, a child uh, from a parent. It's kind of that head knocking that happens within your own families where there's one person who is following and is in Christ and living for Christ and then there's somebody else who doesn't want anything to do with him. It's that difference in value system and how, how you live for him. It's even the differences that, that sometimes we have when, when it comes to even looking at God's word. A person can, can simply say, I think this is what God's word says because this is what I think. But the hardest thing is to actually see what God says. And the reason why it's so hard is because then you have to face the conviction that the Bible says, I am guilty. I am the one who is sinner. I can't do anything for myself and that Jesus is the one way. And yet the world says there are all other ways. Can you begin to feel that kind of uh, uncomfortable heat? And it's right at that moment. Allegiance to Christ, it can be compromised. At that moment, 
you have to decide, do I say something or do I, be, I become a chameleon and just kind of blend in? Do I say something or do I just become silent? Is what you believe and speak here, do you carry it out with you? Is it what you are speaking when you are away from here? And maybe that's where issues that need to be discussed, they oftentimes are buried underneath smile. Maybe family members that uh, you, you, you get together with them. And maybe you don't argue in your family, but discussions of faith are, are not being had. Maybe it's because we're ignoring the signs of Christ's impending return. Because if we don't argue, then we don't have to worry about it. And then maybe all we're arguing about is only going to be fantasy football posts on social media. We'll get together with our family and we'll enjoy some food and drink, but as far as gathering a family together, parents and children, just spending a couple minutes to really connect with, with, with Christ, I can only speak of these things that I know to be true in my life. I dislike division. I hate conflict. And it's easy not to talk about those things. Tell me I'm not alone. Give thanks to God that there is a Savior who leads us to repentance and reminds us of the peace that he established on the cross and that he gives to us in our baptism. Because Christ wants you to not only be able to face the heat, but to be able to cope with it. Not apart from each other, but to be able to experience at the moment of peace and unity that you have in Christ, and yet to be able to know you are going to have to face the heat. You, there is going to be division. For the, the more you experience the one, the more that you begin to, to understand and know the reality of the other. M Mike Llewellyn was... Um, uh, he, he was this uh, long ponytail member of mine in, in Topeka, Kansas. Uh, he, he was an auto mechanic. He rode Harley Davidson's. He had, he had tattoos going up both of his arms. And yet, what a gem of a heart. And he had a dad who, who just was disinterested in faith all of his life. But his dad is old. His dad is now in the hospital. And and everybody knows that he is dying. He, he was still awake. He was still alert. But Mike called up and he goes, hey, pastor, can you, uh, can you just come and, and, and talk with him? And so I, I went and entered the hospital room. And there are all the family members. They're, they're gathered, gathered in little groups off in the corners of the room. Mike is standing right alongside of his father's hospital bed. His, his dad has an oxygen mask on. His eyes are open, though. My, Mike goes, hey, hey, dad. The preacher's here. Listen to what he's got to say. And so I, I, I was talking with his dad about two sisters whose brother died, and they grieved, they mourned. One of the sisters even said to Jesus, if only you had been here, my brother wouldn't have died. And, and Jesus responded to her, I am the resurrection and the life. And anyone who believes in me, even though he dies, He's going to live. And Jesus said to that sister, do you believe this? I, I turned and I looked at Mike's dad and I asked, do you believe this? He, he never once stopped staring at me. He became a little agitated. He, he, he started shifting in his hospital bed. Mike said, dad, if you can't answer the, the, the preacher, then just squeeze my hand, yes. Everyone in the room just watched his hand. He never squeezed. He died 24 hours later. Friends, I think that I would much rather experience a little pain in this life with some tears than 
to think of a place and go to a place where there is such great pain, you never stop crying. I think I'd, I'd rather have division now than to think of a time where I just might be separated from someone that I love forever. I, I, I wonder if that's why Jesus, with tears in his eyes, he accepted his father's call and said, Father, I'll, I'll do it. I will take the heat. And I wonder if it's because he was thinking about the time when everybody is going to have to be standing before him someday and Jesus is going to have to divide them up. Some on the right, some on the left. There's the sheep. There are the goats. He'll divide them based upon faith or based upon unbelief and then he's going to have words. He'll, he'll say to those who are on his right, He'll say, come, take possession of the eternal life that's waiting for you. And then Jesus is going to have to say the hardest words to those on his, life, on his left. He will say, you're going to have to depart from me now. You're cursed. You're going into eternal punishment. Friends, will you remember that? The next time that you are facing that moment, and realizing, I just may have to take a little heat here. Can you take the heat? I'm not saying get in people's faces or be abrasive to them. I'm not saying you have to end a friendship with someone who thinks or believes differently than, than you do. But I am saying there's a reason why you keep coming here to be strengthened in your faith to accept the invitation that the Lord gives you to drink deeply from living waters, uh, his invitation to receive his holy supper, his body and blood, a reminder that you truly are at peace with God. And this morning, as you are leaving from receiving his body and blood and on your way back to your seat, then I want you to think of those people who are divided from their Savior, and I want you to pray for them. Pray for them. And then pray, dear Lord, ignite me. Keep me close to you and to the heaven that you have waiting. But, but Lord, may I never be persuaded to adjust your word simply to fit in with others because, Lord, I want to fit in with Jesus in heaven someday. Because he promised those who remain firm to the end, they will be saved. Amen. Would you please rise? And may the peace of God, it goes beyond our understanding, but may it keep you firm in Christ to the end. Amen.